How many of you are familiar with uh, Gigaspaces, Cloudify, heard about it? None. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, go through uh, a simple presentation and a demo uh, that describe the problem that we're trying to solve. And basically we have two edge or two ends of the problem. One of them is that we want to automate relatively complex applications in OpenStack. And second, we want to make it very simple. Now, it sounds usually as an oxymoron because usually the tools that we use to make applications simple are very different than the tools that we use to manage complex applications. And what I'm trying to show here is actually how do we actually address both? How do we take relatively complex application and, uh, and deploy it on OpenStack in a very simple way? Uh, so bear with me. There are a few slides of introduction in which I will explain the concept. And then I'll end up with a demo that you could all try out, even from your mobile device. You could run Hadoop, MongoDB from just your cell phone, if you'd like, on, in this case, on HP OpenStack. Anyone here, by the way, using HP OpenStack? Raise their hand. No? OK. So one word about Gigaspace for those who are not familiar with been around in, I think, roughly 13 years in the market. Uh, started in distributed computing. Uh, one of our main customers is in the financial industries and uh, obviously e-commerce and carriers. Uh, so we were not the regular startup, if you would like, uh, that you would normally see. So there are a couple of names here, and you can see the mission statement. I'm not going to repeat that. The, the statement or the mission that we're trying to solve is really this one. Uh, on one hand, we had a lot of enterprises interested in moving to the cloud. On the other hand, uh, they're having difficulties to move to the cloud, and we're trying to bridge that gap, so I'm not going to say few, too many words about that. A an interesting survey done recently about that uh, was done actually by RightScale uh, about the strategy that enterprises are taking to move to the cloud. Uh, not surprisingly, even if they want to move to OpenStack, they would still take a hybrid approach. Hybrid really means uh, more than one developer, even if the vendor, even if they're both OpenStack providers, they wouldn't, uh, enterprises wouldn't go with one provider. And that's kind of an interesting angle here because uh, what you normally hear in OpenStack is that everyone's trying to build the entire thing. So you go to IBM, you go to Dell, you go to any of those players, they will promise you the world and will try to give you anything, but most enterprises don't want that. They want a hybrid approach in which they would be able to take, you know, IBM and HP and Dell but also work with Amazon to set in workloads and so forth. Uh, so there's, there's this uh, interesting challenge in which they want to move to the cloud. OpenStack is critical to their strategy, but not only OpenStack. So that's kind of another interesting aspect that we can see here. So the current approaches that people have taken, many organizations have taken, I kind of uh, I try to list them into a simple list of three uh, categories or three types of application. One of them is what I would call the IS first approach. Uh, the IS first approach means that I'm building a very nice, shiny uh, infrastructure as a service uh, that enables me to spawn compute resources on, on demand. Uh, the problem with that approach is that there is the application outside, and the fact that I have a very nice and shiny IS doesn't bring those applications, so I need something to bring those applications. In the case of Bank of America, for example, we're talking about 7,000 applications that are built in a pre-cloud world that I now need to be great. So even if I have and invested to build that nice uh, cloud, I was still going to have those 7,000 applications outside, and I'm not going to have them in the cloud unless I'm going to do something in a short time frame. Uh, so the problem with that approach is that it really not thinking about the application. It just deal with a fraction of the problem. The other uh, approach is using uh, configuration management tools like Chef and Puppet, uh, which is a very good approach, but it's still relatively uh, complex because it uh, requires a lot of scripting, a lot of work, and there's still quite amount of work that we need to implement to actually get our application fully automated on, in the cloud. So they're good building blocks, but not necessarily as simple as we want it to be. And the last approach is the pass approach, which basically means that uh, you care about the environment, and you tell users, uh, if you want to run in the cloud, uh, you develop to the cloud. Forget about the legacy. Forget about whatever you have. Uh, the cloud is a new world, and write to the new world in a different ways in which infrastructure is less interesting and less important. This is a good approach for greenfield application, but again, I have those seven applications outside. What do I do with them? Uh, obviously, that wouldn't cater to, that, uh, to this group or this class of application. 
So let's see what Amazon was doing. So Amazon had the, uh, say the four blocks that they listed uh, earlier this year, which in my view defines the current cloud stack. And what you could see here is instead of three blocks that we used to think about when we think about uh, uh, cloud, which is the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, we can actually see that if I take software as a service outside of that spectrum, there are four blocks, so they have a more fine-grained definition of that spectrum. And that's very important because it's actually coming in a lot of discussions. And what are those boxes? The first box is obviously the compute storage network, the regular IaaS that we used to know. On the other end, I think that's also a box that we used to know, which is called PaaS, which is, as I mentioned earlier, for the Greenfield application. Now there are two boxes that were filled in the middle. One of them is the cloud formation, the equivalent of it in the case of uh, OpenStack, and a new box that is called OpsWork. So OpsWork is really a box that gives me a way to automate the deployment in a relatively easy way of, if you'd like, more complex application. In the case of Amazon, OpsWork runs on top of Chef, so it's actually tightly coupled with Chef. So it's a way in which I can describe stacks uh, and the deployment of those stacks and talk to the IaaS in a relatively uh, more controlled way. And you can see the two axes here are around control and conveniency. So when we move to the extreme of past, we're in a convenient, very convenient world. We don't think about infrastructure, but we lose a lot of control, meaning which availability, how I'm going to run my availability, how I'm going to manage DR, how I'm going to manage uh, and optimize my performance. A lot of things are carried out of me for the good and for the bad. And if I'm on the other side, I have full control, but I have a lot of uh, relatively large complexity. So Offshore really fill in that void, if you'd like, that exists right now, also in OpenStack, that uh, gives me high degree of control, but doesn't cost me that much in terms of complexity. So that's kind of, I think, the trade-offs that defines uh, the cloud in general. We're trying to fill that box within OpenStack. And, and what you'll see is really, and a lot of the things that we're doing is really coming from that uh, understanding. Uh, the product or the project, it's an open source project that is called Cloudify, and actually we're now part of the Solemn project within OpenStack, uh, which is, again, an open source project that basically does uh, what uh, Amazon tried to do with the uh, OpsWork. The important thing is that it's uh, beyond op open source. It's not limited to Chef like OpsWork. It also works with Puppet, and it could work with other configuration management tools. And that's a key uh, in the uh, orchestration because we also uh, recently integrated with HIT uh, on that respect. So the way it works is as follows. Um, we basically take an application and script it. Uh, there is some sort of a DSL. Uh, right now it's Groovy, but it's going to be YAML uh, in the next release. Uh, the script include the, basically defines the blueprint of the application. And the blueprint includes the following things. It includes the definition of how you start, install, and configure the application, but most importantly, how you manage it after it's been installed. So for example, how do you monitor? What are the KPIs that you want to monitor? How do you detect failure? What do you do in the case of failure? What do you, uh, uh, what do, you do in the case of uh, uh, um, scaling, how you scale it? So a lot of that is now scripted in one document, if you'd like. Then, again, comparing to the regular world that we used when we basically send an email to an operator that will do things for us, in this case, we have a document that is uh, uh, understood by not an operator, but a software entity that is called orchestrator. So the orchestrator can read that, that thing, that's the thing on the right-hand side, and have one leg into the input, which is the blueprint, and another hand in the infrastructure itself, which is the capacity and the resources. And what it does is basically matchmaking. It takes the requirements and match it to the resources that we have. And it, in this case specifically, it will spawn the machines using the Nova API in the case of OpenStack. Then it will plug in through SSH to those machines because we don't have any agent pre-installed. So we can take any image that we have already. And it will start to push the software uh, into, that, into those machines and install it. And uh, later on, it will start it based on the dependency that we define in that blueprint. So it will start the database first, load the schema, load the data, and only when the database is ready, it will start the web container. And only when the load balancer is ready, it will start to register those web containers into the load balancer. So in one click, we get a fully orchestrated application without necessarily doing any manual step in that process and without complex scripting that we normally had to do otherwise. What does that really get me? 
uh, it really gets me to the following uh, two items here. One item is that I can take a fairly complex model and reduce complexity by having a much more consistent way of managing it. By means of consistent, the way I manage the installation, deployment, scaling, failover, monitoring, looks pretty much the same whether my underlying uh, product happens to be Hadoop or Tomcat or Ruby or whatever. That's consistent management in this case because they're all scripted in the same way. And that's a big thing. The other thing that we get is the portability between different environments. So once my blueprint is scripted, I have a consistent way in which I can clone it between environments. So I can now spawn an environment within the public cloud, within my testing environment, within my QA environment, within my production environment, something that is critical in continuous deployment uh, and continuous delivery processes because we're going to do that quite a amount of times. Also for DR, because in DR what we're basically doing is we clone the environment on another side, and it's important for us to clone not just the binaries, but also the SLAs, how we manage the failure, how we manage performance, how we manage the scaling of the application. And that abstraction that we have in place between the infrastructure and the blueprint allows me to clone that environment in a very easy way, in a very consistent way. Uh, the last point before the demo is that the other attribute of that portability that I have is that I can easily now have an environment in which I can have my existing environment and my OpenStack environment coexist. And in this case, that allows me to take my workload and run it, first of all, automate it and run it on my local environment, in which case we have another abstraction for that. It could be VMware, it could be bare metal, it could be anything. And slowly and gradually say, OK, the testing and the new version of it is going to run on my public cloud, or sorry, on my uh, new environment. But my production is still going to run on that existing environment because I don't want to take the risk. Once I'm convenient with that, my open stack environment, then I'll do the switch and I'll move that. But I'm going to have the same management between those two environments, and therefore, the process is going to be much smoother. So now to the demo, because we're running out of time. Uh, so basically, the, the title here is, how do I take a complex application and deploy it in a very easy way? How do I share that application in uh, other ways? So we've done a work with HP Cloud to actually deliver uh, a catalog, if you'd like, uh, very much similar to App Store. But it also combines the ideas from YouTube. Uh, and you'll see what I mean by that. So I'm going to switch to a demo here. And let's see how long does it take me to actually uh, deploy an application. So basically, I can go to the cloudifysource.org website. And if you click Try Now, you get to that screen. And unfortunately, I have a resolution here. Never mind. So basically what I can do here is I'll pick one of the applications here from the catalog. I can see that I can uh, now click here on Play. And by clicking on Play, what I'm basically creating is creating a new instance. I'm spawning a new instance. And it will fork a machine, in this case in the OpenStack, in the OHP OpenStack. It will install the binaries for that application and will uh, provision the application on that. I can immediately wire up the management to view all that process. And the management will also be provisioned for me automatically as part of that uh, deployment. And later on, I can actually start the application. So if I go to the management console, what I can see is that the process of deployment as it is taking place. Uh, I can see that the application will be constructed out of two tiers, in this case, a web container and a database. Uh, this is for the free users. So in real life, production will have a full cluster available for me. So for example, if I click here, I see the dashboard of all the resources and applications that are currently being deployed. And if I click here, I can see that there is a MongoDB instance being deployed and a new web container being deployed. And I can see the relationship and the dependency being deployed. All that in less than a minute. And that's kind of the level of simplicity that I can have. Now, let alone that, and that's going to be uh, finishing soon, the, you can see that the MongoDB is already running. The Tomcat should be plugged in in a, in a second. We're not going to wait for that because I'm running out of time. As soon as it's going to be ready, we'll see that thing here uh, become uh, a linked. And I can actually uh, try it out. So I think that should be uh, finishing uh, by now. OK. So it's finished. And it actually tells me to click here. And that gets me to the actual application. And I got the application with a database ready to roll out. Now, the idea is that imagine that you have a catalog of those services available on your OpenStack environment. So you could give the users of your environment the ability to try out 
new products and new releases and new versions and new blueprints. Now, more than that, let's imagine that I created a blueprint for my organization. Let's say that I have a, an SAP. I'm just kidding. Uh, but let's say that I have some, uh, that application and that blueprint as something that I want to share. Now, in video on YouTube, the way I would do that is that we use email to share the link to my video, and that's how we would share that. Now, imagine doing it for a BI system, for a subsystem, for whatever system. It sounds almost impossible, but in this case, because we have the blueprint, what we're basically sharing is a blueprint and a way to execute the blueprint. So we can actually even take a very complex application because we're not actually shipping the binaries. We're shipping the definition of how to run that application. So I can use any sharing mechanism that I have, whether it's Twitter or whatever mechanism, and basically either embed it in a blog and say, here's a new feature, here's new versions, try it out. And people can actually have that outside of that portal. They don't need to go to Cloudify source .org to actually run it. They can actually run it directly from the context of the description of the application. And I can also share it in Twitter or email with other users just by providing the link to that blueprint. Now again, the thing that I'm sharing is how to run that Plat Clinic application. I'm not sharing the instances that I'm currently running for that. I can just use a browser link and that's it. And others can use that same link to spawn their own version of that on their own environment. The last bit that I think is important is that one of the things that we didn't want it to create is that it would be a black box model. And the black box model means that I have this thing running and it's all nice, but how do I move it to production? I need a lot of customization from that definition. So the thing that we did is that we created a very smooth migration from that simple trial to a production. So for example, if I'll provide here my cloud credential, I could use the same tool. But in this case, it would run under my cloud account as if it was spawning the machines and installing that software on myself. So I have full control over where it's going to be running and how it's going to be run. If that's not enough, I can go and customize the recipe and change them to the size and type of orchestration that I want, and then populate it into that catalog. I can decide whether it's going to be in the public catalog or private catalog, because the catalog is basically a GitHub. So I have all the version control that I have with GitHub. I can do pull requests. I can uh, change things. I can clone things. I can run on my own environments. And I can do a lot of things that I can do with code with that recipe. So in that case, what I'm getting is the ability to try out, in a, try out products in a very simple way. Just click, no, hustle free. I don't need to log in, register, do anything. And later on, run it under my account if I want to in a POC. And later on, run it. Or, you know, download the entire thing and run it on my, my own environment under full control, all using the same tool. So I don't need to rip and replace the environment every time that I'm going through each of those steps. And with that, I think we're out of time. So I'll finish the, uh, go back to the slides here. So, so the, the thing that I wanted to kind of end up here is that we started with a vision that says that we can manage and deploy complex application in a very simple way. And I think what I showed you is that we can actually do that in a much simpler way than even the simplest application in Heroku or even App Store can be Dell. And it can be as simple as running a video on YouTube. All that is open source. All that is something that you could download and run under your own OpenStack environment. Obviously, it's already running in OpenStack environment right now with HPCS. There is a new version coming out, uh, which actually takes that even a few steps uh, further. Uh, but that's kind of, I would say, uh, the, uh, the end of that. So thank you very much.